Hello there, and welcome to Everything Coptic, and as we promised, we will begin a series on books. I think the first book I'd like to go into, it is a church father, uh, it's a monastic text, it is St. John Climacus, The Ladder of the Divine Ascent, and this is a book that was commonly read by monks during the Great Lent. It is a very monastic text. However, do not be deceived. Just because it's a monastic text does not mean that we as lay persons, married, whatever, people who are not celibate, cannot read it. We take these lessons from monks and we apply to our own lives. Why? Because we too, as Christians, all Christians share asceticism. On the one hand, we look towards the spirit and raising the spirit and the body in relationship to the spirit becomes a partner to assist the spirit. So in this book, St. John Climacus has 30 steps, starting from the most basic step, the most basic step in a person and the callings of monasticism. And you can see in this book, a transformation from, from a worldly person who is now uh, turning his back upon the world. He's leaving it to go become a monk and leaving that world and then the transformation that occurs in a person towards a heavenly life. And don't we too do the same thing as Christians? We move from <clears throat> an earthly life. We move from a, a life where we care about things of the world and those are the things that are most important to us to a life where we are much more concerned with heavenly things. So I'll just read random excerpts because um, I think it would be good. But the first step, and there's a long introduction. I don't recommend you read the introductions. Don't worry yourselves with these things. But the first step is the renunciation of life. And this is truly where our life with God starts. That even in a Christian baptism, uh, sanctification, holiness, these things come from uh, being, removing, being removed by God from this world and being attached to him. So it's the renunciation of life where we begin deta the detachment that occurs in which we may then be attached to God. I, I love the section on obedience. If there's any step to read, it's step four. It's, a, it's a quite a long book, uh, but here's, a, here's one section I just came upon. A man should know that a devil's sickness is on him if he is seized by the urge in conversation to assert his opinion, however correct he may be. If he behaves this way while well, talking to his equals, then a rebuke from his seniors may heal him. But if he carries on, it on this way, with those who are greater and wiser than he, his sickness cannot be cured by human needs. And here he's addressing sins of pride and in monasticism and many other things. It's good to withhold our opinion because when we give our opinion too often, we think too highly of ourselves. And this is the beginning of pride. Rather, it's an indication of pride. We need to look to others Lessons like these throughout the book, and one that I remember was uh, St. John uh, the Abbot. So St. John Climacus, he goes to, he's, he's Western, but he comes to the Coptic monastery in Egypt, and he learns about Coptic monasticism to bring back. And while he is learning, the Abbot says, do you want to see something incredible? This is on the step on obedience. Yeah, sure. Yeah, show me this incredible thing. Okay. So he calls over the probably the eldest monk at the monastery he says you come this is while they're eating so the monk comes and he stands in front of him and the abbot who called him says nothing at all so he just leaves this this venerable father standing in front of him and saying john climacus is horrified that this is occurring in front of him so they eat they finish eating and everyone leaves and at the end the abbot's like okay you're dismissed so the monk is about to leave and St. John Climacus says, wait, hold on. You just stood there waiting. Why? And what were you doing? He said, well, when my master commands me, it's as a command of the Lord. So I stood in front of him and I recited Psalms, reminding myself that I'm in front of the presence of God. And it's these thoughts that St. John comes across. It's these, these moments, these stories that affect the narrative. And it makes for a very excellent Lenten reading. It does take you through a journey. Uh, I wish we could talk more about St. John Climacus, but I'd say read it if you can. It probably is the loftiest of the books that we will speak about in the series. Excellent text, but uh, to our Lord Jesus Christ, belongs all glory and honor with his good Father and the Holy Spirit, and glory be to God forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.